Jeremiah chapter 44. The word that came to Jeremiah, and to pick up with chapter 42, 43, with 44, concerning all the Jews which dwelt in the land of Egypt. Now, these are not the ones that were taken into Egypt. They're dwelling there. These are the ones that we've been talking about in 42 and 43 that have gone down into Egypt are living there. They weren't even supposed to go into Egypt, which dwell at Migdal and Tehaphanes. We saw that uh, yesterday with the, the brick kiln. And at Nov and in the country of vassals, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. He has seen all the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem. It's destroyed. It's gone. It's history. It's not ancient history. It's new history. It's just happened. He has seen all the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem, upon all the cities of Judah. Behold, this day they are desolation, and no man dwells there. Because of their wickedness, which they have committed to provoke me to anger. That's the reason. God has pronounced judgment. He has sent the prophets to them, warning them. Now the judgment's happened, and God is saying, this is why it happened. God will warn you before the judgment comes. God will warn you while the judgment is happening. And then once the judgment comes to be, he's going to tell you, this is why I did it. Behold, the wickedness which they have committed to provoke me to anger in that day went to burnt incest. Incest. Well, that was something you're supposed to do for God. No. It wasn't. Where was the incest, where was the incest burned? It was burned in the holy place. By the Levites. By the priest. There was one particular tribe. And there was one particular part of people. All, all priests are Levites. But not all Levites were priests. This was supposed to be done in the holy place. There was a king that walked into the holy place. And began to burn his incense. And he developed leprosy. After being acknowledged by the priest. And not listening. And to serve other gods. Now we're going to get very important details in this chapter, Lord willing. As we, as America marks a spot of the great dope of the Roman Catholic Church coming to America. Amazing how we open up a particular chapter in the Bible to announce that dope as he enters into our shore. Where he's got the masses of people and won't open the Bible. So we'll address the dope of the Pope, of the church, through Jeremiah 44 on September 22nd, 2015. Now you can go back and go through all the chapters we've done since Genesis 1 to Jeremiah 44. The lay to the fact is that we did not plan this chapter to be done on the anniversary of the dope coming to America. And because of their wickedness, which they have committed to provoke, provoke me to anger, and that they went to burn incest, uh, that's something that the dope authorized in his church, and to serve other gods, that's something the dope authorizes in his church, which they knew not. Neither they nor their fathers. Isn't that dope under the men called fathers? How be it? And they, and they wouldn't recognize any of the saints, any of the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because you know what? The, the dope in his church has a bunch of things that, that defy the scriptures. You know, the, the, the feathers of Michael and the breast milk of Mary and the, the two skulls of John the Baptist. Come on. How be it? I, God, sent unto you all my servants the prophet Obadiah. Job, Amos, Hosea, Hosea, Isaiah, Micaiah, Nahum, Zephaniah, Habakkuk, Jeremiah. I think they got it pretty much a warning. You know how many Bibles that the dope could get a hold of? You know how many King James Bible that the dope can read? And his, uh, his priests can read? And his nuns can read? Imagine a nun being a woman and they don't even know what the nun of the Bible is. I guess they can't tell like Americans what sex they are. 
They must be dopes. You, you read your Bible, you get yourself a King James Bible, you know what's going on. And if you don't know what's going on, and you're doing these, these wicked abominations, you are not in the Bible or your religion. Rising early and sending them, saying, Oh, do not this abominable thing which I hate. What's that? The incense, the gods. But they hearken not nor inclined their ear to turn from their wickedness. There was no repenting. I have not seen the dope in his church ever repent to God of the foulness that they've been teaching all the people through the years. To burn no incest unto other gods. Okay? New Age movement. They burn to other gods. It's wrong. Wherefore my fury and my anger was poured forth and was kindled in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. And they are wasted and desolate as at this day, present time that Jeremiah is writing. And at the present time that God is speaking. The city is destroyed because of these sins. These sins that are active in America today. These sins that are active throughout the world in religion. And it makes God angry. It is not the way of God. God said it is. What? Wickedness. Abominable. But we do it in the name of God. We do it in the name of Christ. And God says. Therefore now thus saith the Lord. The, the God of hosts. The God of Israel. Wherefore commit ye this great evil? Read what we just read. And you still do it in your church. You still do it in your worship service. And God said, add another word, evil, great evil, against your soul. To cut off from you man and women, child and suckling out of Judah, and leave you none to remain. That's why Judah is destroyed. That's why Jerusalem was destroyed. Because of these sins. And that ye provoke me into wrath with the works of your hands. Burning incest unto other gods in the land of Egypt. Now they're doing it in Egypt. They're not doing it in the homeland no more. They spread the stuff around. And now they're doing it in Egypt. They have not repented. They have not. Listen, there are going to be people that you're going to preach the gospel to. They're going to hear the gospel. They're going to hear the Bible exactly correct the way it's going to be. And no matter what, they're not going to do right. They're going to go about with their religion. They're going to go about their ways. And if it's a family, if it's someone you love, if it's a co-worker, if it's a best friend, whoever it is, you just got to realize the fact is you got to tell them like Jeremiah what the truth is. And tell them what the gospel is. And it's between them and God. And they may never get right. Because many go the broad way. And these are God's people we're talking about. These are Jews. The elite of all the elite of all the world. And they're doing what God told them not to do. And they're going to die and go to hell. What do you think you're going to do? Oh, I got a pass because I got a note from the dope. I don't think so. And when you see your dope stand before God and God cast them off in the lake of fire, well, they didn't I bless her, they didn't I kiss the ground, they didn't I have a prayer or priest, they didn't I do all this. And Jesus said, I never knew you, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. But I'm the victor of Christ. Ha, 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 and all the angels in heaven will, will laugh. Take that big fat guy and his pizza pies and throw them into the oven. That's amore. Have, I, have ye forgotten the wickedness of your fathers? Now, read that to a priest. Walk up to that guy who wears his shirt on backwards. Hey, let me quote a Bible verse from you. Jeremiah 44, 9. Have you forgotten the wickedness of your fathers? Never mind call no man your father upon the earth. What about that one? And the wickedness of the kings of Judah. Go back to Chronicles. Go back to Kings. Go back to Samuel. And the wickedness of, of their wives. It's a family thing. And your own wickedness. 
Yeah, point right to you. And the wickedness of your wives, which ye, which they have committed in the land of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. Countrywide, citywide. And God is angry. They are not humbled even unto this day. We read about being proud in chapter 43. Neither have they feared, nor walked in my law. Isn't that funny? Jonah said, I fear the Lord. Really? Why didn't you do what God told you to do the first time? And then the second time, why did you do it with anger? You fear the Lord? Remember we talked about chapter 42? Just because they come to you, pious, oh, pray for us. We fear the Lord. Yeah, really? Do you? Do you do what the Bible tells you to do? Nor walk in my law. That's the Jews. That's not us. Nor in my statutes. That's the Jews and not us. That I set before you and before your fathers. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Behold, I will set my face against you for evil to cut off all Judah. Now, does that sound good? He said, well, leave, leave, leave the, the church alone. Leave the, the dope of Rome. The dope in his church proclaims, proclaims to be the Jews of the Bible. God's all finished with the Jews. So we're the one. We're the kingdom builders. We're going to bring the kingdom, kingdom in, and then Jesus Christ will come and be all happy. They are dwelling in that holy land today, supposedly. I mean, supposedly holy. But they're dwelling there. Everyone's fighting for that piece of land to bring in the kingdom. What's going to destroy them? The sins that we're reading about in 44. It's active. 2015. I will take the remnant of Judah that have set their faces to go in the land of Egypt to sojourn. We talked about that word. That's a funny word because that, mean, that word means you bring suitcases. Not boxes. You don't get a moving van for sojourn. You get a bus, train, plane, taxi. And they shall all be consumed and fall in the land of Egypt. That doesn't sound like you're going to have a temporary dwelling in Egypt. It sounds like you're going to get a box, all right, a coffin. And be buried where you are not supposed to be. Christian, you not Christian, you better never die where you're not supposed to be. You better not die in a bar room. You better not die in in a bed with someone who's not your spouse. You better not die with a cigarette in your mouth. You better not die with a beer in your hand. You better not die amongst family if they're not serving the Lord Jesus Christ and hate them. I believe in total separation. You better not die where you don't belong because that's where your coffin will lie. Imagine the Lord Jesus Christ calling you up the judgment seat of Christ. All right, let's see where you died. Let's see the circumstances of your death or the rapture. Imagine passing around a joint amongst your friends and a rapture happens. <laughs> Guilty. You better watch out. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Because Jesus is coming to town. These people go off to a place where they're not supposed to. And there will they die. And they shall even be consumed by the sword, war, by famine, no food. They shall die. That's not sojourning. From the least even unto the greatest by the sword and by famine. And they shall be in expiration and an astonishment, and a curse, and a reproach. If you're saved, I don't care. You die in your sins. Look what it says. You know, because of many Christians and their actions and their sins and what they do, you are a curse to those who do love the Bible and do do right. Well, I like to tell you about Jesus. I know a pastor made off with a piano player. Well, I like to tell you about the gospel. I know somebody who ran off with the church money. Well, let me tell you what the Bible says. I know somebody who cheated me a hundred dollars. 
I can go on and on and on. For I will punish them. When do you get punished for not doing for, for doing good? I will punish them that dwell in the land of Egypt, as I have punished Jerusalem. Now you figure Egypt would be trembling in their boots. They've already got their butt kicked in Exodus. But they don't even get right. Here's a religion that is against the Bible, and the country of America says, Come on, bring your dough. We'll put the flags out. We'll, we'll build Lego churches and stuff like that. And we'll just have great fun inviting you with your heresies and your anti-Bible and your devilment. We'll just invite you to our country where we take God and prayer out of the schools and the Bible and try to shut up the preaching. Yeah. God bless America. Don't do it, God. Don't do it. As I punish Jerusalem, listen, if it happened in Jerusalem to God's people, don't you think it's going to happen to you who are not God's people? By the sword, by famine, by pestilence, so that none of the remnant of Judah, which are going into the land of Egypt, shall sojourn there. There's that word again. And escape or remain, and they shall return into the land of Judah, to which they have a desire to return, to dwell there. For none shall return, but such as shall escape. In honor of the dope coming to America. You ready? Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by, the great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt, in pastoral. This is an Egyptian, this is a, a African religion now. Alexandria, pastoral, answered Jeremiah saying, they're going to answer the man of God, the street preacher. We're going to call to the Bible, to the man of God, to the word of God. As for the word, the word of God, the Bible, that thou hast spoken, which you just read in Jeremiah 44, the King James Bible. We just read what, what Jeremiah said. This is the word of God. This is their response. In the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. How do you like that? Well, I go down and preach. I go knocking on doors. No one got saved. Jeremiah 44. Something wrong with masses and quiet and few thousand people go into a town and everybody in the town got saved. Everybody was baptized. Really? But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goes forth out of our mouth. To burn incense unto Mary and to pour out drink. Ooh. Mr. Dope in a Row, pay attention to Jeremiah 44. Go ask any Catholic who the Queen of Heaven is. And if they don't answer Mary, they're not a good Catholic. I grew up in a religion. I grew up in a Polish Roman Catholic family. You better believe that us Polacks, they served that Pope. They served that church. I had an aunt that had Jesus Murrow on the wall with his heart sticking out. And Mary there with her candles and everything. Don't you tell me. And to pour out drink offerings. Pick up juice. The blood of a man. Cannibalism. Don't tell me. I watched that guy hold that, that, that chalice up there. Say fee five fo fum. All these people in this church are very dumb. Drinking the blood of a Jewish man. As we have done, we and our fathers, there's a priest again, our kings, nations have represented the dope in his church. And our princes in the cities of Judah, in the streets of Jerusalem, they're doing the worship of the queen of heaven in God's home area. Where the temple is, or was, they are worshiping the Roman Catholic Church in B.C. 587. Don't tell me the church is something new made after the apostles in the New Testament. Boom! There it is right there. Her name is Asterisk in Jeremiah. It's not Mary. She changes her name. Like every pope does. He changes his name. Even the nuns change their names. You gotta protect your identity. You're getting awfully, awfully a little loud here. Yeah, because I've been, I have seen my family go to hell because of this religion.
It's of Satan. And in the streets of Jerusalem. You ever, you ever see you ever see that church have their little things in the streets and little parades and all that? When I grew up in New London, Connecticut, on uh, Huntington Street, they would carry Mary around on her, on her statue on their shoulders as they pinned money to her. I've seen it. I've been part of it. They didn't carry Jesus down the street. They carried Mary as they posted money upon her and drinking. And then... For them had we plenty of victual, and were well, and saw no evil. When we were worshiping the Queen of Heaven, everything was all well. But we'd given up worshiping Mary, and now everything's befallen us, and we're having hard times. But since we left off the burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven, and the burn and the pour out drink offerings unto her, we have want of all things, and have been consumed by the sword and by faith. They're blaming the destruction. Of Jerusalem and Judah on because Queen of Mary the Queen of Heaven Asterisk is angry with them because they have not oh we're, we're not finished yet are we we're looking at I can't say the word incest incense incense so I've been rushing through that word and drink offering now if you can't see the Roman Catholic Church we're gonna read on incense and Burnt uh, and drink offerings, okay? And, it, and everything is all mass confusion. Everything is destroyed because we haven't worshipped the Queen of Heaven. Now, do you want to see the mass? Do you want to see the dope on the rope in Jeremiah 44, B.C. 587? And prove there to be liars? And when we burnt incest to the Queen of Heaven... And poured out drink offerings unto her. Did we make her cakes? There's your wafer. Do you know where the wafers come from in your church? Do you know that there's a sacred, secret organization of nuns in California, USAA, that is authorized by the church to make those wafers? You got the incense, you got the drink offerings, and you got the little wafers, the cakes. I'm what they would call it devil's food cake. There's your mass right there. And I grew up in that every Saturday night. Them pulling that smoke and, and the chalices as they go down in, in their procession to the to the altar down the center aisle. As they would have their drink offerings in a cup to drink the blood of Jesus Christ and give you a little wafer on your tongue. There it is right there. There is the mass in Jeremiah 44, verse 19, 587 more years before that church was ever even thought of in a fart of Alexandria. I'm so stupid, don't even, don't even have to be called a brainchild, a fart. Then Jeremiah said to all the people, to the men, and to the women, and to all the people which had given him that answer, saying, Jeremiah, the incense that, we, that ye burned in the cities of Judah, and in the streets of Jerusalem, ye and your fathers, there's the priests, your kings, there's the rulers of the nations, and your princes, and the people of the land, there's the people, did not the God remember them and came it not into his mind? Didn't God see what you're doing? Doesn't God see you take part of that mass? So that the Lord could not no longer bear because of the E-V-I-L. Match that arrow to verse 19. Of your doing. What were they doing? Verse 19. God calls the mass from a previous Roman Catholic Polish family of the church evil of your doings, of what you do. When you do that mass, it is evil, God says, and because of the abomination, look that word up in the Hebrew, in the Greek, in Webster's Dictionary. Which you have committed. 
Therefore is your land desolation. You know what most lands under the under the dope is? Is desolation. It's portal. It's lack of anything. The nations that live under that dope are in poverty. But he lives high in the hog. Oh, is that a clean animal? Won't be living on high and hog when he gets the Muslims as his friends. Have to change their dinner. Chicken. Therefore is your land desolation. Why is your land desolation? Verse 19. An astonishment. What is that mystery Babylon? What did everybody? It is astonished that that city has fallen, has, has burned into the city, into the water. And a curse. How do you like that one? Without inhabitant, as at this day. Anybody who takes part in Jeremiah 44, 19, known as the mass under the queen of heaven, they will have no part. They will have. They will be desolation. They will be a curse. There will be no habitation. There will be astonishment as they burn in hell without the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, taken by faith. And I believe there are Roman Catholics that are saying, I'm talking about the system. I'm talking about the dope. I'm talking about the men and women under the dope and the authority, not the people. Because ye have burned incest and because ye have sinned against the Lord. That's a sin. And have not obeyed the voice of the Lord. You have not obeyed the voice. Can it be any clearer? Nor walked in his law, that's the Jews, nor the statutes, that's the Jews, nor in his testimonies, that's the Jews. Doesn't the Roman Catholic bring up the, the, the nine commandments? No, no, we have ten commandments. No, you got rid of one commandment so you can break ten into two, which is really nine. That sounds like they're trying to map the teaching their kids in America today. Common cause, man, whatever you call it, common core. We got ten, but we really don't have ten, we have nine. And don't they put you under laws in that church? Sacraments? Isn't that what that's all? You got to be, uh, I forget what they call it. You got to be, uh, when you're a baby, you got to be sprinkled and you got to go through their classes and you got, uh, there's a wedding and burial and all, all the junk and the candles and all. Isn't that all laws? Isn't that all statutes that you have to follow that dope and its rules and regulations? See how they put you under the law as being a Jew? I'm not under any law for salvation. Now there's a law and there's a testimony to all that to be a proper Christian and to be a proper uh, citizen of my church and my country. Moreover, all right, therefore this evil has happened unto you as at this day. I'm excited. This is Jeremiah, man. He fires right back at the people. He looks at the well because we stopped burning up Mary, Mary and all that, the Queen of Heaven. Look at all this destruction. And Jeremiah walks right in their face and says, The destruction is because of your sin. You're not preaching love. You're not preaching love. Well, you can't say that because it hasn't been written yet, but. I grew up in this mess. That's why it hurts me. I've got family that are in hell thinking before they stand before Jesus Christ one day, they're going to think that they're going to be loud in heaven, and they're not. And they wouldn't listen to me like they wouldn't listen. Listen, I got my whole family mad at me, all right? Don't tell me. I either talked to them verbally, I wrote my family letters about their church and about the true salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ and got them all mad at me. Don't tell me. I get religions mad at me. I got the Jehovah Witnesses mad at me. I got people in the public street mad at me. Because I proclaim the Bible just like Jeremiah. I know what Jeremiah is going through. These are his flesh and blood. And he's not sitting down having hot dogs and hamburgers at the family picnic with him. 
He is proclaiming the Bible. They don't want anything to do with him because he's got the Bible. If your family wants something to do with you, you're not living with the Bible if they're unsaved. They're going to say, we're going to live our way. You go live your way. You go take your Jesus somewhere else. We just read that in the Bible the other day. One of the problems, listen, get out of Bethel. Bethel is the king's residence. You go take your Bible. You go take your food. You go live somewhere else. Just don't preach here. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And Jeremiah's getting it. He's been in jail for the word of God. He has been held captive by the enemies of God and dragged to Egypt, even though he's an enemy of them. He is street preaching in Egypt. More Jeremiah said unto all the people and to all the women, Hear the word of the Lord, all ye Judah, that are in the land of Egypt. He's in Egypt and he's preaching. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, Ye and your wives. He's naming them. He's pointing them out. Have both spoken with your mouth and fulfilled with your hands, saying, we will surely perform our vows that we have vowed to burn incense to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her. Ye will surely accomplish your vows and surely perform. You're going to keep on serving your God and your religion no matter what I say. You ain't going to listen to me and God at all. How's that? Jeremiah walked up to him and said, You know what? You're going to keep on doing what you're doing. I know it. Therefore, therefore, since you're not going to obey God, hear ye the word of the Lord. Since you're not going to obey the, the word of the Lord, listen to the word of the Lord. All Judah that dwell in the land of Egypt, behold, I have sworn by my great name. You imagine God standing up. God, yes, raise your right hand. Put your hand on Jesus. Jesus is the word. Do you swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, and that what you're going to do is, is by an oath of God Himself? Yeah, I do. I'll sign my name to it. I am Jehovah Almighty. That's how serious Jeremiah 44 is. When God pronounces the judgment upon these people, he swears by his great name. He signs it. Now, I don't know if it's Jehovah. I don't know if it's I am. By my great name. What, is, what does Acts 4.12 say? For there is no other name given among heaven whereby you must. Maybe he signs it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like to have the Jehovah Witness following in that one. Imagine God signing his name in front of a Jehovah Witness saying that he's, his name is Jesus Christ. I mean, don't people take the name of Jesus Christ as, an, as a cuss? Saith the Lord that my name shall no more be named in the mouth of any man of Judah in all the land of Egypt, saying, the Lord God liveth. He's going to wipe them all out. Though they sojourned in Egypt, he's going to wipe them out. God just said, listen, I'm going to kill you. How's that sound? I'm going to take your religion and I'm going to kill you. Because you're not obeying me. Behold, I will watch over them for evil. And not for good. And all the men of Judah that are in the land of Egypt shall be consumed by the sword and by the fit. How many times has that shown up? Until there be an end of them. Egypt and the men of Judah are going to get blasted. And you know the people in the wilderness that 40 years. They just died out. Some of old age. Some cancer. They got ran over by a camel. Maybe they drowned, uh, choked. 
got hit on the head, got in a fight, went to bed, didn't wake up the next morning. These are Jews here in Egypt. And God is going to kill them by war, the sword, by famine, or by drought. And you know what the sorriest thing about this whole thing is? We got two more, three more verses. No one repents. It is never recorded that one person came up to Jeremiah and said, ah, Jeremiah, I am so sorry. God is right and I am wrong. Uh, excuse me. Can you tell me what I can do to get in God's favor? Whatever it is. I'm dead serious. Whatever God says for me to get right. I want to do it. I want to get back to the homeland. I want God to be on my side. I don't want to die by I don't want to have anything to do with these men. You don't read it. And Jeremiah does not go on their side. He doesn't come up with programs. He doesn't do magic tricks. He, he just preaches the word. Behold, I will watch over them for evil and not for good. And all the men of Judah that are in the land of Egypt shall be consumed by the sword and by the famine until, until there be an end of them. Yet a small number escape the sword shall return out of the land of Egypt into the land of Judah. Now, isn't that a contradiction? Doesn't that sound, well, God just said he's going to kill them all. Yeah, but I found I found the answer, I believe. And it's over here in chapter 43, verse number 4. Here's the answer. So Jehanan, the son of Kariah, and all the captains of the forces, this is the army, and all the people obeyed not the voice of the Lord that dwelt in the land of Judah. But Jehanan, the son of Kariah, and all the captains of the forces, the army, took all the remnant of Judah, that were returned from all the nations, whether they had been driven, to dwell in the land of Judah, even men and women and children and the king's daughters and every person that Nebuchadnezzar these then, the captain of the guard had left with Gedaliah, the son of Hyacinth, the son of Shaphan, and Jeremiah the prophet, and Beirut, the son of Nerah. You tell me that Jeremiah and Beirut would have been killed in this thing? Jeremiah and Beirut and some of these people here, the men and the women, and the, and the daughters were taken by force. They did not. There are people that went into Egypt by force, not of their own will, like Jeremiah and Beirut. Those are the people now we're reading. Yet a small number of escaped from the sword shall return out of the land of Egypt in the land of Judah. Those are the ones that were taken by. They did not want to go, but they were taken by the army, including Jeremiah. So that's not a contradiction. All those that wanted to go into Egypt are going to die. And what's going to happen when they die? Those that were taken by force, look, they're dead. Bye. Let's go. Let's go home. And all the remnant of Judah that are going into the land of Egypt to sojourn there shall know whose word shall stand, mine or theirs. Those people that go back are going to look back and say, what a bunch of liars. What are they going to say a bunch of liars about? The queen of heaven. And that religion. And this shall be a sign unto you, saith Lord, that I will punish you in this place. He's in Egypt. That ye may know that my word shall surely stand against you for evil. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will give Pharaoh Hophera, king of Egypt, into the hand of his enemies, and into the hand of them that seek his life. As I gave Zedekiah, king of Judah, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, his enemy that sought his life. Babylon's going to have a field day. Because of people who will not listen to what God said. And this goes all the way back to Genesis 3. Genesis 2, God told one man, don't eat the fruit. 
And what happened? He disobeyed the word. When God tells you to do something, you better do it. We read that the other night. God said, stay in the land. No, well, we're going. When God tells you not to do something, you better not do it. You are without excuse with the Bible. Many Christians do not go into all the world and preach the gospel. They're not coming out of the judgment seat of Christ too happy. Many Christians will not suffer persecution. They're not coming out away from that judgment seat of Christ not too happy. There are many people who have their own religion. They're going to walk away from the great white throne judgment. Burning. There are people who do it their own way for salvation. They're going to be at the great white throne judgment. Walking away. Burning. When God said it, yea or nay, you better do or not do. God is very serious. Very serious. That he put it in writing. And not only did he put it in writing, Jesus said, Heaven and earth may pass away, but my word shall never pass away. It's going to be forever recorded in glory.